everyone. I'm Melissa McAllister, and you're listening to The Melissa Made Show. Now, for decades, I've dedicated myself to helping women break the cycle of dieting, navigate through all the fads, and change their lives through my nutrition coaching. Now, each week, I'm going to talk about everything from deep nutrition, mindset, self-care, the ideal workout routine, tips on how and why to implement intermittent fasting in your life, my favorite recipes that are not only crowd pleasers, but they're actually healthy for you, and so much more. Now with small and consistent changes, you can defy aging while living a happier, healthier, and more heart-filled life. I'm so excited to show you it's possible with the right strategies that are so simple to adopt. Hello and welcome to the Made Fit Show. My name is Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald and my co-host is the beautiful Melissa McAllister. She's the maid part, I'm the Fitz part. And today we have a very special official episode one, the weight loss special, because we are at the end of January and there are a lot of people that started the year off having the intention to losing weight in 2024. And you and I both know that we are approaching that time of year where some of the New Year's resolutions are dwindling off. So you and I have a long history of helping a lot of people in their weight loss journey. And so we figured that this was an appropriate time to do essentially a weight loss special. So we are going to talk about all things weight loss today. And we are basically going to take your expertise, Melissa, as a functional practitioner and nutrition specialist and all of your many you know, expertise and education. And then we're going to take my history of um, being an MD, I'm a physician, but I'm a, a functional medicine practitioner. I um, I was a fitness professional for a long time. So we have lots of tools that we use. And, and that's the analogy that I like to use with my, my weight loss patients specifically is that I've got a bunch of tool belts and I got to figure out which tools are right for you to use because not everyone needs all of the tools, but there are some basic essentials. And so in today's episode, we are going to just cover the basic essentials that are really, really important for everyone to understand. And then we'll go into the nuances of stuff that may or may not be right for a different individual. So out of all of the things that we talked about before today's show, what do you think is the number one most important? I think it's oh, cliche, sorry, people, but I really think it's it's having the right mindset that you are doing it. <laughs> I get there too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yeah. Not because there's, you know, you have a, a trip coming up or because, you know, your spouse makes, you know, innuendos about it or for any other reason, except for the fact that you honor yourself and you respect yourself enough to live a very healthy, long life. And so to have your, to have your headspace in the right places, you can't, you can't do any of the other things we'll talk about if your mindset is not there. Correct. Correct. And uh, the, the mindset is one, one of those things that Honestly, I was actually just talking about this with someone the other day. If we could come up with a magic pill to help change the mindset, we would be oh. bajillionaires, right? <laughs> because that's the missing element in so many people's journey. And I mean, it, you and I could come up with a whole list of people just right off the top of our head of people that we care about, we love so much, and they are still struggling in their weight loss journey because they haven't had the appropriate change in their mindset. Right. And mindset is one of those things that once you understand the power of it, it, the sky's the limit, but getting to that place is the hard part. So, okay. So I'm going to ask you a question. So you have been helping people in their weight loss journey for over 17 years. You've been a, a health coach, you know, with Beachbody for 17 years, but you were a fitness professional before that. So you've been helping people for a long time. What do you think the number one factor is in helping a person go from a mindset that's keeping them in the the rat wheel, the 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 cycle that they cannot break to getting to the other side? What do you think that the biggest key is getting to the other side of that? Well, what I really notice is um when people do have that, you know, they're on their journey. Uh, I will learn that some people will come to me and say, you know, I am exercising every single day, or they'll say I'm eating healthy. And my first question is, well, can you define what healthy is? They yeah. have, um, they've done their, they've done their education. They 
believe what, you know, this workout program is going to work for them. This nutrition program is going to work for them. Um, but, but what I find is they focus too much on one area, hoping that it's that one thing, like, you know, the 10,000 steps. If I just, if I just get the 10,000 steps a day, so their, their mindset is there, but they're too hyper-focused on it just being one thing. And I think it's one thing you and I will really uh, stress is it's number one, it's consistency, but it's, it's a bunch of little things that you do and not just one big thing that you do. So with mindset, I really try to help people understand that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to kill yourself in the gym. You don't have to eat absolutely perfectly. You don't have to do all of, you know, this, you know, you know, you're not a good sleeper. So if all of a sudden you start sleeping well, then that's going to be the one thing. There is no one thing. It is a bunch of little things that you will do. Um, and you will make, um, habit. And before you know it, they will become se second nature. And then you realize it's a lifestyle and you actually enjoy that lifestyle. But as far as mindset goes, it's getting over the fact of thinking that it's probably this one workout program, or it's this one certain style of eating that's going to get you to this place. It won't. It's it. Th I mean, it's a, it's a toolbox. <laughs> so do you think that it is harder now in 2024 than it was say back when we were, you know, in our twenties to have that mindset shift because we've got so many distractions in, in the mindset realm, like meaning what I mean by that is, um, it's so easy to be distracted by social media. It's so easy to be convinced by your favorite instant flu in, instant influencer. That, did I just say that right? Why did that sound? Funny? Yeah. The instant influencer that this is it, that that's it. And, and then people just end up scrolling and not doing, I, I mean, do you think it's harder now to have the proper mindset versus back then? Or do you think that it's just been, uh, equally hard versus now versus then? I think it's harder. I think, uh, we've gotten to the point of analysis paralysis for sure. Uh, Cause you will have one doctor coming on telling you that you only should eat meat. You'll have another doctor coming on telling you you should only eat fruits and vegetables. It's in, you know, they're, these are educated, good people for the most part. They're just very devout in what they believe. And it's, uh, it's very, it, that gave me goosebumps because they feel so bad for so many people because they, they, they get suckered into this cult, like, um, I have to do it this way. And I'm you guys, I'm the first one to tell you that I have loosened my reins because with the maid diet, I was, I mean, although it's still percentages and ranges, um, I was still so, you know, I really want you to, you know, I really be careful with those carbohydrates. And I still don't want you eating a million carbohydrates, but I've pulled back the reins a little bit on that because for some people, more carbohydrates are better for other people. A little bit less carbohydrates are better, but you have to remember your individuality. And I think here today on social media, especially you've got these beautiful people, both, you know, intellectually and physically telling you, this is the way you're supposed to do it. You believe it, not taking into consideration how you live your life, your genes, you know, what, you know, where you're coming, where you're starting versus where somebody else is starting. So long-winded for me, I think it's much harder today, but what about you? Well, and just like we were talking about before we press record, we need to record that stuff so we can put out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But we were talking about like how many influencers don't show the whole picture, like which, which kills me. I mean, if you are someone that is in the bodybuilding world and you're taking steroids, cool. It's not my, I have no right to judge you if you're going to, but but make sure that you let people know the, all of the things you do to look the way you do, right? Don't only tell people a little bit of it. So then that jacks with people's mindset too, because they're following influencer A who has this, you know, perfect body. She's 40 and she's fit and blah, blah, blah. And she tells you all of her macros and all of her workouts, but she doesn't tell you that she's also taking XYZ peptide, um, you know, whatever she's taking to also help get her to that place. And then it jacks with the person's mindset that's following. I'm like, well, I'm doing all of the things and I've been doing all of the things and I don't look like you. It's like, it's hard. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, maybe you've got one that's telling you they're doing all the things and you're like, well, I can't afford all of this. So I, you know, I, I can't look like her cause I can't afford what she does. And so there's, 
there's such a happy medium there. You know, there are some, which we'll talk about some great tools that are available to you, but it also just comes down to just, you know, really making better choices on, on, on the daily and that you can get 99% to your goal with just those better choices, but say you want to get to the hundred percent, there are tools out there that will help you um, as well. True. True. But man, the, the mindset really, I'm so glad that you said number one is mindset, because if, if you can understand that if you put the same amount of effort in trying to transform the way you look at food, the way you look at, Mm -hmm. let's say data that helps you in your weight loss journey. I mean, I, one big mindset shift for me and for the, for the listeners that don't know my own weight loss story. So I, when I started my weight loss journey in, it was when we got back from Bali. So that was September of 2022. So mm -hmm. I am almost five, six, I, I'm going to round up to five, six, but I'm really five, five and a half, but whatever. Um, when I got back from Bali, the scale was somewhere between 155 and about 159, 160. And I'll tell you, most people that would have looked at me would have not said I'm overweight. And definitely no one would have said I'm fat. Maybe, maybe people super lean might've looked at me and being like, yeah, you're a little pudgy, but whatever. I, I didn't look in the mirror and say I'm fat by any means, but I definitely looked in the mirror and was like, mm, I'm definitely carrying extra weight than I'd like. And then when I was looking at pictures flying back from Bali, that was really when I was like, I, I'm actually a little bit heavier than I'd like. I, I was not as happy with the pictures. And so when I got back from Bali, that's when I started basically taking all of the tools that I was using with my own patients and start, and that's, I used some magnetide, but I also started counting my steps. I started measuring data that's measurable. So I started weighing myself every day. I started doing DEXA scans quarterly. Um, I, I, I used data that helped me stay on track. And I will tell you for the first time in my life, the scale started to not produce an emotional response because I had a mind shift, a mindset shift that I started to see that morning scale number as the same as my aura ring number. Like I would, you know, I would wake up, pee and open my aura ring app and see my sleep score and my, my readiness score. And then I'd hop on the scale and see what my weight was. And it, it took out the emotion from the data that was ultimately helping me get to a healthier place. And so mindset shift is not something that just happens overnight. It happens with you intentionally working on it every day. And, you know, part of that is understanding, you know, that you and only you can do that. You, you can't, there's no magic book or no podcast that's going to help you change the mindset shift. You, you got to do the work, but it will change everything. So, okay. So what do you think the second number, the, the second important factor is in the journey of weight loss? I'm, I, well, I'm just, I'm like specifics or umbrella. Um, I do think obviously that, that your nutrition is, I was going to say hydration, but that can fall under nutrition. You know, I, I think we, especially my, my husband this morning woke up and he's just, you know, complaining about just pain. He worked really hard the last two weeks and the nutritionist slash wife wanted to say, you don't drink water. <laughs> he never drinks water. I have to always hand him a glass of water. Um, he, he goes for coffee first thing. So anyway, I just see the effects of chronic dehydration in him and his, you know, his pain. And so I think obviously hydration is just something that a lot of us don't realize how important that is above and beyond that. Um, good nutrition, you know, eat, eating just a whole food based diet. Yeah. I, I was either gonna, I was hoping you'd say nutrition, but I, I was going between nutrition and sleep. Cause I, I think they might tie for an equal second because I, man, I, I will tell you my, in my weight loss program. And for those that don't know what the weight loss program is, that's at Laura Marmed. I have a, a 12 week weight loss program where I will use semaglutide and other tools with my weight loss patients. And I will tell you the ones that I have the hardest time with even using semaglutide are the ones that are like shift workers that have terrible sleep and, and have high, high stress jobs. Mm -hmm. Literally, you know, those are the ones that I do have to go high doses on semaglutide. And sometimes that doesn't even work for them. So the sleep is something that I don't know where we, how we got to a place where we just thought the whole, like, Oh, I can sleep when I'm dead mentality. You know, I mean, yeah. coming from, the, the medicine world, like my ex-husband was a surgeon, as you know, but man, anyone that has ever known a surgeon will tell you that that's their mentality. Um, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, it's, it's almost a badge of honor. How many hours you can go straight without working or with working without sleeping. It's mm -hmm. crazy. 
the, I, and I mean, it's been since 2015, since I've been in the conventional medical world in the operating room. So maybe it's shifted. I don't, I doubt it, but, um, sleep is, is definitely something that I think is almost equally as important as nutrition, if not more. Um, but it's funny you say that too, because we talk about how we'll, we'll incorporate our life experiences in our intro podcast. You talked about what a good sleeper I am. And I always have been, I've always been a tremendous mummy, Melissa. That's going to be a nickname. So not fair. <laughs> I can, I can, I mean, a hotel, you won't, you can't even tell that the bed was not made uh, because I just don't move. Um, but that I've also never had really had excess weight. I mean, a little bit, you know, with pregnancies and stuff like that. Uh, but I've never had, I've been able to keep when I am conscious about it, to keep my body very lean. Um, and I know sleep plays a huge role in that. You know, when people say, you know, especially at the, almost the age of 50 and to still stay so lean and to keep my muscle mass, uh, the fact that I do sleep well, I give my body the chance to recover, uh, is, is huge. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, the nutrition aspect of it. So, um, some of my favorite things to see on social media are captions where they show people back in the 1950s, you know, on the beach or walking around the cities. And then they show today and the one major difference that I, I mean, there's a few major differences, but I think the, the biggest major difference is the food that the people in the 1950s ate versus the food that people in 2024 eat. Right. And, and the analogy that I always use, I didn't come up with this, so I can't take credit for it, but it is literally, it's the fuel analogy, right? So if you have a Rolls Royce and you bring it up to a gas station, if you, so you have three different kinds of fuel to, uh, op, to accidentally or purposely put into that Rolls Royce, you can accidentally put diesel in it, which it will make it die right away because it was not designed for that. Right. You can put the crappy cheap stuff in it, which it's not going to make it die, but it's definitely not going to run at peak performance. Or you can put the top grade expensive stuff in it so that it runs at its optimal way, right? And so most Americans are putting diesel in their, their car um, that is not designed for diesel, right? They're eating crap, fake food. We call it Franken food. We didn't come up with that name either, but it's a brilliant way to describe stuff that is disguised as food. But it's, it's not, it's made in a lab. Um, and, but it doesn't, it doesn't quickly kill you. Unfortunately, like diesel will immediately kill the car. Like you, you probably won't be able to get home. Right. I mean, I've never accidentally put diesel in a real car, but we did, we did in Germany make actually oh, wow. diesel. Yeah. And I'm sorry, here to tell you, yeah, it does not run. <laughs> in a rent. <laughs> How far did y'all get before it died? Loves that story. So thank goodness he, um, and we're on the Autobahn. He, uh, only filled up half the tank. So it sputtered and Mick just was like, I've got to run this out so I can put, you know, premium back in it. Um, but it, it all over <laughs> like 150 miles. It was, I mean, Taylor and Tanner love that story. I mean, cause you know, Mick, Mr. Car guy, I don't know how it happened, but somehow he put the wrong gas in and it was, it was, it was bad. I mean, that poor, it was a BMW. No, it was an Audi, poor Audi. Um, I don't, it'll never be the same. <laughs> I was about to say, it probably didn't recover after that, did it? No. <laughs> But I don't know why people don't understand that when they eat the, the, you know, the, the processed fake food or eating out at, at your fast foods, like, why don't they understand that that's exactly what they're doing? I, yeah. I mean, and I it's, it, Lauren, it's not that it's not like the thing that I really wish people understood is it's not that you're just eating, you know, that, that, that meal is just void of nutrition. It's not just void of nutrition. It also took the place of nutrition. So it's like drinking a diet soda. You know, you think you're quenching your thirst, but not only are you not quenching your thirst, but that soda is also dehydrating. So you're putting yourself in a worse state. It's not neutral. Eating those on a regular basis, not only keep you from having good nutrition brought into your body, but it robs your body of nutrition. So it's a double whammy. So I, I really wish people would understand because it's, I, I do struggle with, um, there's no such thing as, as good or bad food. You know, there's you no, are. more. I, it, it's bad. I, you know, I'm sorry that if that word upsets people, but it's, it's bad for you. I don't know how else to say it. It is bad for your health. So how do you, yep. but, but a cookie here and there is not going to kill you. No, it won't, but 
we have, we have an issue today with food addiction and, and it's not just a cookie. Um, it's, it's waking up and going to sleep with, you know, processed and highly processed foods because they're cheaper, which is horrible. And then they're also, they're yummy. <laughs> so it's, it's a problem. You and I have talked about this before. They literally at these big food companies, they have food scientists that will literally study to make sure that the bliss point is achieved so that a person will continue to come back and think about those cookies so that they can come back and eat the whole sleeve, if not just a few cookies, because mm -hmm. they typically are messing with our brain. Like yeah. it's the fact that they can do that and it's legal blows my mind. Right. I mean, it's like drug dealers, but legal drug dealers, yeah, essentially. And, and, you know, it affects our children. And not only do these foods that are hyper palatable, you know, call our names, but they also make it so that carrot doesn't taste very good. You know, you don't, you, you, I, I buy carrots in Mexico all the time and I just have like, they're, they're big old fat and I just grab it and I'm constantly chewing on it, make things. I'm weird. I'm a horse, but I love the taste of a carrot because I really try hard not to have these hyper palatable foods very often so that I still enjoy the sweetness of a carrot as opposed to going, ew, this tastes like dirt. And I think somebody who doesn't eat real foods like that will eat a carrot and go, you know, this tastes like soil versus, oh, it's got this sweet, crunchy texture to it. So, uh, there's just, there's so many double whammies to everything. Um, and, and I don't think we talk about that enough. No, no. And also for the listener that's, that's listening here, like, well, tell us more about the nutrition. You guys know, I mean, we're Melissa McAllister is, I mean, this is half her podcast. That's her, her jam. And is she, <laughs> she yeah. She's, she's got lots of education about all things nutrition. Um, so we will, we will intertwine so much of nutrition on probably every episode in some way or another. Um, but I, you know, today's weight loss special, um, is just the, the top pointers that we think that we've seen over the years of helping people in their weight loss journey, make a huge impact. Um, but I will say like literally Stop complicating it because humans have been on this planet for a very long time and humans have eaten animals from land, fish from water and plants when they're in season. And if literally, if you can get back to that, it, it it's actually, it's not as expensive as you think. That's an, another lie that they want you to believe. They want you to believe that the, you can't afford the, the, the really healthy food. That's BS. Like if you go to eating real food, you go, you can go to Costco. I just went to Costco and bought a ton. I'm, I'm literally here. So for people watching the YouTube channel, I have a fake background. It's the beach, but I'm actually living on the beach. I'm like an eight mile walk from the beach here in South Florida um, for the winter. Cause Chicago and I are not friends during winter. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the, the background right now. Cause that's literally where I'm at, but um, I can literally go and buy wild caught seafood every day. Now it's a little bit more expensive. So I literally just bought a ton of wild caught frozen stuff from Costco and it, it's actually super affordable. And so guess what? It's just stop making excuses. Like literally, if you do the math, you'll see that it's actually not that expensive to eat just real whole food, and, but you yeah, gotta learn to cook. And, and Melissa, tough love moment. Number one, we buy the expensive, more expensive foods, and then we still try to treat ourselves with these other. So it, it seems expensive because you're adding it on top of kind of what you're already still buying, quit buying that stuff. Uh, let it go. Don't spend money on that and, and really make a habit of, you know, meal prepping or, you know, eating what you buy at home. Like you said, cook more often. And number two, we do eat too much. You know, we don't, we eat too much. We have too many calories in the day. We have too much food. Uh, than what we really truly need. Most of us do uh, by by quite a bit. So if you cut back on how much you eat as well, which I'm t I know that's not easy, but that's where you you know you bring in the professionals and you get the support and you get the accountability and the help and all that stuff. But we eat too much. So if you pull back on buying the crap and you pull back on eating too much, a healthy lifestyle is very very affordable. Well, I will tell you, and I know you've heard this before, and I think we might have said this on our past episodes where you interviewed me. Um, when I was on semaglutide, I think that was one of the eye-opening moments for me because I, I honestly, I didn't think semaglutide was going to work for me. 
um, because I was already eating healthy. But what I recognized when I was on semaglutide, I was eating too much of the healthy stuff. Cause I definitely, I'd never tracked my calories while I was on semaglutide, but I know that I ate way less. I know that that was one of the main mechanisms of action that helped aid in my weight loss. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. but calories do count. They do matter. They're not the only factor of the equation that matters, but if you're eating too many calories, even if they're all whole foods, you know, grass fed, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you're not going to lose weight if you're eating too many calories, bottom line. So calories do matter. So, yes. okay. So, so we've, we've talked about mindsets. The number one thing, a tie for second is nutrition and sleep. Then what would you call number three? Um, definitely movement. Uh, and you and I, I think, I think this is very interesting for you and I, because I feel like you've, because you, you dance, you've, you've always been one to move. You've always been a mover. Um, I found myself doing my, my workouts, you know, my 30 to 45 minute workouts and busting my ass. I, I, you know, I push hard when I work out, but then I was kind of very sedentary for the rest of the day. And so, um, for me, me getting to a, a weight that I'm very happy with took me increasing my movement, AKA my steps where I think for you, you've, you're on the opposite end of the spectrum. You really have embraced always strength trained, but strength training to the point that you are lifting heavy stuff to, you know, build muscle as opposed to maintain it or telling yourself, you know, cause I used to do that too. I grabbed that 10 for a bicep curl, um, thinking that's, you know, I'm building my biceps. I, I could do 40 of those. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I grab a 15 and I can maybe squeak out, maybe squeak out 15 or 18. So movement is obviously the next one. And, and for me, it's been the, my, my step count, or it doesn't have to be steps just that I'm not sitting. I, that's what I love about the aura ring. Uh, Lauren and I are both huge fans of that because it'll tell you how, how many hours you had of inactivity. And if it's red, you're like, I, you know, you just got to get it more often. You can't sit like her and I now have sat for a while. And I'm sure we're both getting itchy because it's not like us. But movement for me, as I assume you're going to say, it's probably movement for you too, but in a different way. Yeah, no, for sure. I knew you were going to say, it's so funny. We think alike so many ways. So yes, <laughs> I agree. Movement. I would challenge the the listeners to see movement in uh, two categories, um, your, your traditional exercise and then the non-exercise, what we call NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And if you're not getting both of them, you're not giving yourself all of the tools to lose weight. And so the first thing is we have got to jump on, well, we've, we've been on this bandwagon. We'd need everyone else to jump on this bandwagon that lifting weights as a female is not going to make you look like Hul Mrs. Hulk Hogan. Okay. The only way that you can look like that. And we already know the stereotype that, that so many women have been fearful of if they lift weights, you will, cannot look like that unless you take steroids. And, and there are some women that intentionally take steroids because they want to look like that and no judgment on them. But like, there are so many women that don't lift weights because they're deathly afraid that that's what they're going to look like. And like, that's not possible. And so our muscles literally are everything that they're, they're, they've been coined the organ of longevity, which I love that because it is true. I mean, we all know if you walk in any, any, any place in the United States, you can find, especially in Florida, my gosh, don't get me started. All of the old people that literally they're moving around like with hunchback and barely moving. And it's like, holy bananas. Like if you don't want to end up that way, you've got to build muscle in your younger years, because not only is the, you know, muscle important for your metabolism, but the longevity thing is real. The more muscle mass you have going into elderly years, the better quality of life. So yep. you're not going to get muscle just by, by living and, and doing the, the daily activities of life, right? You have to do resistance training and man, for those of us in perimenopause and postmenopause, weight training is super important. And I don't care how old the listener is. If my mom can start lifting weights at 68, you can too. And mm -hmm. there's no excuse. I don't care how old you are, how inactive you've been your whole life. You and only you are the excuse why you have not done it yet and stop making excuses and hire a personal trainer and start learning your way around weights because movement, exercise, traditional exercise with resistance is going to change your life.
But then the neat, you and I, our journey to our journey, our trip to Bali, I really do think that that I'd I had counted my steps before, but it wasn't until you and I were in Bali and we were so obsessive about how many steps we took every day. And I just kind of continued to that because it was fun because it was like, you know, am I getting as many steps as I got in Bali? Because anyone that follow, followed us on that journey, like we shared every day, man, what was the most steps that we got? Like, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you had taken a nap or something. Uh, you should one day sh share your Bali belly story. Um, but I got lost if you remember that. And that's the highest steps I've ever gotten. It was over 40,000 steps because I got, got lost in Bali. Um, <laughs> I was safe and it was beautiful. Um, and I finally found my way back, but we, we were, we were well over 20 each, each day. Easily. Yeah. But that was really when I just, I, I continued that and didn't even realize that that was another metrics that I continue to follow and track every day. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until I really started to look at like, okay, what did I do in the, cause I was on semaglutide from what was it? September, 2022 to May, 2023. So uh, roughly seven to eight months that I was on semaglutide. I, I used it um, but I did it the right way. And that's, you know, I just, I will put a plug for my, my weight loss program right now. If you are interested, if you're in the United States, just email info at laurmarmed.com. Cause I, I stand on the fact that it's, it's one of the best in the country because I do it the right way and I've done it myself. So I know all of the, the pitfalls that people can face. So, um, I, I used it to help me get to my goal body weight and then wean myself off of it. But I was looking back at like, okay, what did I do differently? One, I ate less. So that was, you know, we talked about that in the nutrition. Um, but two, I, I I definitely started lifting heavier weights and started lifting to a place where I was fatigued. So it didn't, I, I, I wouldn't stop at, you know, I, I used the example of the biceps, you know, like I can, I can curl 25 pounds. I'm strong. Mm -hmm. But before I was, I was only picking up the 15s because I'm a girl and I'm not supposed to be lifting more than the dude right beside me. And really I started just embracing, like, I'm going to start lifting heavy stuff. Right. And then the neat is that was, that was really when I started to just be intentional about looking at my step count every day. Weight gain. It can be so hard to avoid, especially when we're binge watching our favorite shows and getting invited to party after party. And it's frustrating when we're working really hard and everything seems to be going right, but yet that scale keeps creeping up and up. But I recently learned a really interesting fact about how weight gain works and the super simple ways that we can control it. So I was chatting with Tina Anderson. Now she's the founder of Just Thrive Probiotics and you definitely wanna check out the podcast that we did together. It's really good. <laughs> she told me that when it comes to fat burning, you and I are basically at the mercy of two specific hunger hormones. Now stay with me. I promise this won't get too sciencey. Now these hormones, which are controlled by your gut are responsible for switching off your fat storing and switching on your fat burning. Interesting, right? So when your gut can properly parent these hormones, your body literally absorbs less fat from the food you eat and burns the excess fat that you have. Yes, please and thank you. <laughs> but thanks to our modern toxic world, it's way too easy for these hormones to misbehave and to kind of run amok. So when this happens, we end up choosing foods that we know are bad for us. We're eating more foods, even when we're not hungry, and we're making bad food choices because we think that it just might possibly boost our down mood. Now, that's why it is so important to support the health of your gut so that you get these hormones under control. Now, thanks to Tina, my go-to gut support is Just Thrive Probiotic. If you've been following me, you know I'm obsessed with gut health. <laughs> Up to 80% of your immune system lives in your gut. So a healthy gut is truly the master key to staying resilient and feeling your best. And with Just Thrive Probiotic, I feel confident that I'm giving my body what it needs to stay strong and balance my hunger hormones so I can avoid unwanted pounds. I trust Just Thrive because their probiotic has more clinical research than anything else out there. You hear that? 
I love that it's vegan. It's non-GMO. It's gluten-free. It's dairy-free and free from anything artificial. And it's even safe for kids. You can literally break open the capsule and sprinkle it onto any food or drink because Just Thrive strains are so resilient. They are all natural and do not even come alive until they get into your intestines. Now, seriously, I can mix it into smoothies or bake it into any recipe without losing the potency. Now, as a bonus, Just Thrive Probiotic can even support beautiful skin, better sleep, and a brighter mood. Just Thrive is my secret weapon for weight management. And right now, you can save 15% off their award-winning probiotic when you go to justthrivehealth.com and use the promo code MelissaMade at checkout. I don't know who got the walking pad first, but you and I, I think both got it in last summer. And I will tell you, I got the walking pad in the summer and I lost an additional like seven to 10 pounds after being off of semaglutide for a few months. And now like my average step count, I don't know what you're at, but like, if I get a, if I have a day that I have less than 15,000, I feel lazy. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, um, I, I still push for 10. Um, and, but without, without that, t- I mean, I'll, I'll walk around my kitchen. Um, I just like to hit that number. Um, but, but I do, I'm, I'm generally around 12,000 a day. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, okay. So we, we, um, we have the number one is mindset. The number two tied is nutrition and sleep. Number three is, um, exercise, both exercise and non-exercise activity. Um, what do you think the fifth and, and final is? I think it's, um, it's, it's that outside help, you know, whether it's uh, something as simple as a multivitamin all the way up to, uh, you know, there's, there's prescriptions out there that can help or hinder. <laughs> and that's why we have the functional medicine doctor with us. Um, we were just talking beforehand because, um, there are weight loss aids out there that are, safe and effective. And there are ones out there that I guess are available. I thought they weren't available. Um, they are available and they're, they're not so safe. And so I do think, and I know that we both, uh, tout this, the importance of supplementing, and I'm not talking about supplementing, uh, you know, necessarily a a thermogenic or anything like that, or, you know, a, a fat loss, you know, supplement that a company will say, will help you lose body fat or belly fat. Um, but more the vitamin D's, the, the, do you remember ripped, ripped fuel? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Guilty. I, I tried to do a few other fat burners back yeah. in the day. Ephedrine, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure I took that. I, I took every popular, if somebody on social media back then, Facebook back then was taking it. I was trying it, you know, I was GNC's best friend and, um, I'd go up to the young buff guy and I'd say, you know, I want to lose body fat. And he just blowed me up with pills and I, and I tried them. Um, but I, I do think that listener <laughs> yeah, supplements that help your body run more optimally are, are great. I use peptides. Um, I've, I've been on and off CJC, uh, for a long time. I mean, it took a really long bout off, but I remember when I first started taking it and it, it takes a hot minute to, for it to start working, but my audience started noticing more striations in my shoulders and stuff. And so, uh, that's, you know, it's just, it, it's a signaling molecule that helps your body with, you know, human growth hormone, which obviously at the, at the age of 50, uh, bye-bye. <laughs> so I take that on and off. Um, the Lauren's the expert here, but you guys have heard me talk about BPC, how it's a recovering, uh, and Mick has been on it through all of his back, broken back and broken ankle and all that stuff. And it has really sped up his, yeah. And the pill form is really good for your gut. I mean, there's just, there's so many, um, that as far as peptides go, and then there's prescription, very unfamiliar with prescription. Uh, but, uh, but I know there's prescription out there as well. Uh, I do live partially in Mexico and they have pharmacies. They have more pharmacies than we have McDonald's. Absolutely. There's a pharmacy on two of the four corners. Um, and it's mind blowing and, and I, and I shouldn't say I giggle. I don't really giggle, but I find it intriguing 
that whenever, you know, I, I walk by a pharmacy, I, it's, it's a lot of American men and women, and I know what they're buying. <laughs> they're buying the diet pills. They're buying the, the steroids. They're buying the, the Viagra. Um, they're buying the, I mean, they're just buying all the stuff that's prescription in America um, in hopes, but I just going to circle it around. If you don't have the right mindset, those pills ain't going to help you. <laughs> But, but that's what I think is, is kind of the final stage. And any of this stuff that we're talking about right now, without that mindset, you know, stress, sleep, hydration, nutrition, exercise, you are wasting your money and hurting your health. It's absolutely pointless. Totally. I've, I'm, I've always said, if, if you haven't changed all of the other stuff, you taking supplements, it's like peeing in the ocean. You are not going to make a difference. I, I mean, truly, like, it's crazy to me how people will spend a ton of money on buying supplements, but not have any mindset, like, like realization of like, wait, wait, let's start on these other things first that don't cost all this money before you go supplements. Yeah. I mean, it's, they are supposed to serve for what their name they're Mm -hmm. supposed to supplement a healthy lifestyle. And if you're still eating the, you know, the, the fast food and the processed food and, and not prioritizing movement every day, you know, Pee, pee in the ocean. You ain't going to make a change, you know? Right. So, um, and we will do a few episodes. We will do an episode specifically about peptides. So I know we're just kind of teasing the listener right now. Cause I, I mean, let's face it, you and I have so much that we can talk about. So just to let the listeners know, we will do an episode or two or three about peptides. We will do um, an episode where maybe we dive a little bit deeper into the prescription weight loss drugs. Um, in the the episodes that you and I recorded for the Melissa Maid show, um, obviously we talked about the incretins, which is, you know, semaglutide, terzepatide, Wagovi, um, Mongero, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I, I will talk about my own personal experience and maybe dive deeper into, you know, the weight loss drugs specifically just for the record, out of all of the weight loss drugs that have ever been able to be prescribed, um, I have only personally used one of them, um, which is the incretins, which I've already talked about, which is, you know, the semaglutide, terzepatide. Um, I've never used any of the other ones because the risk versus benefits to me personally were not worth it. And so um, while I have the ability to prescribe the other kinds, I have opted not to um, for reasons that I, I can think we talked about it in the, the, the ebook that you and I wrote together, just kind of mm-hmm. dabbled on it, yeah. but, um, but yeah, supplements and, and not just supplements, but health coaches and, and programs and all of the, the external stuff that can help aid in all of the other stuff is, is definitely can be a, a vital point. Um, do you want to address what you think about stress in the weight loss journey? Yeah. And even just today, the episode that came out that I recorded, uh, with Mandy uh, was about trauma. So, you know, trauma and stress. So, you know, obviously trauma creates stress, but that was such an interesting podcast. Cause we really talked about, especially when you suppress trauma, how you're in that, just that natural state of higher levels of cortisol, um, and stress does that as well, how it can really hinder. I mean, it's going to hinder your mindset. First and foremost, which is the biggest thing we're talking about here, not only your mindset, but physically, you know, you're going to feel it physically and emotionally, and it will absolutely hinder your ability to love your ability to sleep, your ability to give two craps about choosing the apple over the Twinkie. You know I mean? It's just having stress in your life and, or trauma that you're not addressing, um, is, is huge. It's, it's really up there too. I think you and I would both agree. And Lauren, I always tell people there's lots of different types of stress, but you have to look at it in two ways. There's stress that you really can get rid of. If you are on social media and you follow accounts where people are causing, you know, cause they're, they're mean people, but you, I'm going to give you an example. And I started falling into this trap and I've quit doing it. When you watch a reel and you know, the comments are going to be funny yet derogatory to that person. I used to run to the comments because I would giggle because people are clever. They're, they're almost comedic. And I, you know, and I used to think, you know, but then that's, it's making me think ill of someone I don't even know. And who am I to judge this person who may be, let's say it is an overweight person at the gym and somebody, it now hurts my heart. So I've quit doing that. If you have those, get, get into that kind of stuff. That's not good for you. And then there's also stress that you have no control over. I always use my mother-in-law or excuse me, a mother-in-law as an example. Um, (laughs) 
Um, sometimes you can't get rid of the mother-in-law, but you can learn to deal with that stress. You know, when, when they're talking to you tune out, or soon as, you know, you have that wonderful conversation with the, the, the mother-in-law who's got her two cents on everything, you, you remove yourself, take a couple of deep breaths, say, you know, say some positive affirmations to yourself. So get rid of stress. You don't need. And then also please, um, the stress that you, the traffic, you have to drive in this traffic to get to work. What are you listening to on the radio? You know, listen to a podcast, listen to uh, to Christian music, you know, listen to something that keeps you in a happy, healthy mood instead of listening to screaming hard rock, which will give you road rage. I mean, there's just so many things you can do to eliminate stress and also deal with it in a better way, which is so good for your health. For sure. For sure. I, I, with my weight loss patients that have difficulty losing weight, even using semaglutide that have a lot of stress. It's Mm -hmm. a fine balance of giving them, giving them grace and giving them tough love because there, there is an element of, okay, I, I get it. You've got stress that you feel you, you have zero control over, but the reality is if you look at it closely, there are elements of that stress that you can control. Mm -hmm. So taking of like, all right, well, I realize like I'm, I'm thinking of, I've got a few, you know, male patients that are CEOs of businesses that travel a lot and, you know, they're, they're having hard time getting their steps in or, you know, eating healthy. And I'm like, all right, so I get it. But when you're at the airport, you can get your steps in, you can plan appropriately and bring high protein snacks with you for the travel. Like, so I can't change the fact that your job requires you to travel all over the world, which, yeah, that's a stress on the body, but let's focus on the elements of that, that decrease the, the negative impact that that stress is, is happening, is happening on your body, you know? So it's, you know, but stress really, there's, there's a a common phenomenon that you and I've talked about before. I think I've even talked about it on your podcast of, of cortisol steel, where, Cortisol is this hormone that acts like a thief and it will literally steal from your other downstream hormones. And so this is why someone that constantly is needing to make cortisol to deal with stress after stress after stress has such a difficulty with losing weight because you do need all of these other hormones to work in harmony to optimize yourself. So, you know, stress is something that you have to understand if you are constantly in fight or flight and you're trying to lose weight with or without semaglutide you're mm-hmm. going to have difficulties doing it. If you don't own the parts of the stress that you can, you can control. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I mean, that goes back to you asking at the very beginning of, you know, in the 1950s versus today, I do think stress is a lot higher and that plays a huge role in why you see people at the beach that have, you know, a lot of excess weight, the majority of people versus back then they didn't, I mean, there was stress back then, of course, but I don't think it's at the magnitude that it is now that we We have a lot, there's the comparison game, Um, you know, obviously right now our, our finances uh, (laughs) aren't real good, you know? Um, So there's just, there's more stress today and, and that's, and that's going to cause you not to sleep. So it's just, it's, it's a perpetual wheel and you can't please you. You want to go in the weight room and lift the weights because you know, there'll be a visual positive effect on that. You want to eat healthier because you know, you'll feel better when you eat a salad versus, you know, the, the greasy pizza. Um, and you don't necessarily think that you're going to feel better if you cut out part of your social media, but you will, I, I have, you know, the last several months have just really social media is, is a tool for me now and, and not a huge sense of entertainment for me. And this huge difference, huge difference. Um, so think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like Reddit, I, I've probably spent two days of my life, even reading anything on Reddit, because that, that platform, from what I understand is just, Oh, it's, it's more negative than positive. So like in three years since I was on there three years for you, good for you, I, man, you, you got to choose what, what you feed your brain with. And if it's, if it's constantly that kind of stuff, yeah, of course it's going to poison you. Yeah. So, so I think to wrap this up, I think, so 75 hard. Most people know what 75 hard is. I think that people like the 75 hard concept because they, there's a checklist that they do Mm -hmm. every day that really just helps them do all of these daily habits that you and I just talked about. There's nothing magical about 75 hard because if you do two 45 minute workouts a day, 
um, one outside and one inside, guess what? You're getting both exercise like and non-exercise. You know, you're getting movement. Um, mm -hmm. You're following a, you know, a nutrition plan. Like it, it's not, it's not anything new. There's nothing new under the sun, but what the point of me bringing 75 hard up is, is that there's an app that people check off a list of things to do. And so if you need to create a checklist where you go in every single day and like, you know, treat, treat these, these basic things like you would your job. If you have to show up nine to five, Monday through Friday, you're going to be there hopefully before nine. So you can clock in and, and you, treat your exercise just as the same treat yeah. the time you meal prep as the same treat your bedtime and your wake time just as the same so that it is just habit and you can check the box check the box i'll, I'll tell my patients look if you go to bed at nine o'clock set an alarm on your phone to go off at seven o'clock that says have you reached your ten thousand steps or however many goal that you're at and if you haven't then get your butt either outside or on your walking pad and get your steps in, like make it where it's, it's a non-negotiable. And, yeah. and most of these things don't cost a lot of money. if not any at all. You know, I am, I'm, a, I'm so, a, I love to check things off. And I always tell uh, my clients, cause for me, the bathroom mirror is somewhere you're going to look, you know, at least once a day, hopefully twice a day to brush your teeth. Um, I will take a, a Sharpie and I will build a calendar on it. And when I go to bed for what, I mean, it might be that you, stayed within your calorie range. It might be that you had, you hit your protein goal or that you hit your walking. I don't care what it is, but you mark off before you go to bed. There's something about, I mean, I mean, it builds such a sense of accountability for the self and, and you don't want to break this beautiful chain that you have of this calendar where you see the, the big red X's on every single day. And there's nothing that will, you know, oh. that, you won't think about throughout the whole day that I am not going to bed without being able to make that red X um, that has worked so well for me. I mean, even if it's a, to write a book, you know, an ebook or to, to put together something, you know, that I, I know I have to work in. Did, did I work an hour today on this specific thing? It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> and there's apps for that, but just to have it literally on my, on my mirror is, is a very profound thing that, that makes sure that I hit my goals. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading through, um, the Bible in, in 365 days and the Bible that I have, it, it's called the quest Bible. And there's, there's three different reading plans. And so I was just finishing up the second reading plan, but I literally, I did the math. I was like, okay, I need how many check marks to finish this reading plan so that I can start the third reading plan, which is to read the Bible in a full year. So I can start January 1st. Cause I wanted to follow this podcast called the Bible recap that literally takes you through in 365 days. And oh, there nice. is about that check mark and it got, it, it got it done. And so I literally, it, it, it's gotta be a human nature thing where it's just like, it makes you feel like accomplished, like, okay, check. Yeah. And yeah. there are plenty of times I'm like, Oh, do I really, yeah. okay. I'm going to So hundred so, yeah. percent. So, so hopefully our listeners at, at right now they're recognizing, okay. Um, uh, we haven't talked about any neuroscience or any, anything that needs a PhD. We haven't talked about anything that a majority of Americans don't have access to. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that a lot of them have a reality check of maybe they're not really doing all of the things that they think that they're telling themselves they're doing. And so have this be a, okay, let's go back and, and kind of status of the troops. Where are we at and how are we doing? And if you need to write out a freaking checklist on your mirror or in your phone, or, you know, and maybe download the, you know, whatever app, do it. But this journey of losing weight, it's not a fast journey. And I always tell my patients, I, I remind them one pound of weight loss per week is the goal because slow weight loss stays off. Fast weight loss is not ever good. It's not it comes back even faster. And so having, if you have someone like I'll, I'll, you know, make a big picture goal. Like if, if you have 50 pounds to lose, there's 52 weeks in a year. So we're talking like this time next year is when you're going to be approaching your goal. Right. And so understanding mm -hmm. that, okay, if I've got 50 pounds to lose, if I started at 200 pounds and I want to get to 150, it come July, I'm only going to be at 175, but that's 25 pounds less than I did at the beginning of the year, but I'm still only halfway there. And so just the reality check, like, 
this is a slow, steady process. And, and I promise you, the sooner that you understand that these, these five pillars that we talk about mm. really are the baseline foundation to any true successful weight loss program. Um, because again, we want you to lose weight and keep it off. We right. want you to get this where you you're off of this roller coaster ride once and for all. But and unless you see it as a habit change, you're gonna continue on the roller coaster ride. And what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say the you can equate it to, you know, climbing a mountain or something or going to to a view like we did in Bali. That was amazing. But um you can run up that mountain with your head down, um, you know or you can go up slowly. You can enjoy the journey. You can learn from the journey. You can, you know, notice things during this journey that are just as important as being at the top versus head down and running, which could be dangerous. You know, it's, you could injure yourself. Um, 3 a.m. in the morning when you start the hike. <laughs> that was, that was, that was amazing. That was, it was. Headlamps and all. Yeah. So I just keep that in mind too, that you are learning to become a better version of you through this journey. If you do it the right way and you do it slowly versus just because what, if you take it off really quick, um, it's obviously not sustainable and you're not learning about yourself in the process because you're doing things that are unnatural. If you lose weight really quickly, it's unnatural. Your body doesn't do that naturally. So trust the process that every single day that you wake up, you're just that much closer to your goal, but I want you to, and Lauren wants you to enjoy the process and to find a way that makes it sustainable and enjoyable. You got one life. So on this journey, enjoy your life in the process, not once you get to the destination, but this next year, you're going to love who you are and who you're becoming losing this weight, as opposed to losing it really fast, increasing your stress, not sleeping, you know, hating the journey and then not having a good outcome long-term. And, and I, I wish that a lot of them would start utilizing visualization. I was just listening to a podcast a week ago talking about how that's what Arnold Schwarzenegger talked about. Like in between sets, he wasn't listening to music. Back in the day, there was not even music played in gyms, much less, you know, in people's ears. In between sets, he would literally sit and visualize his, like he was doing biceps, he would visualize his muscles being flexed. And like the, the power of visualization is very real. And so just understanding like it's a process and, you know, we're, we're, we're not perfect. We haven't figured it all out, but we've definitely seen a lot of things that work, a lot of things that don't work. And then some in-between stuff. And, and ultimately we, we want this, this particular episode to just kind of be a scratching the surface of a reality check for a lot of you guys that may have set a new year's resolution to lose weight and understand that, you know, it's, it's a process and enjoy the journey, you know? Yeah. And, and don't, don't be too hard on yourself. If it's not what, what you chose to do come January 1st, you know, you didn't fail it. Most likely it failed you. Uh, and that's okay. Um, that's okay. Just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and, and tell yourself, okay, you know, slower, <laughs> slow and steady runs the race. Well, really the only way they fail is if they quit. So yeah. bottom line, don't quit, pick yourself up, dust yourself off and, and get back on it. So if you've already fallen off the bandwagon, come on, we're, we're, we're here. Oh. It's not <laughs> too for you. Come on, come back on. We, we want, we want you to understand that this is the one life you get and the healthier, healthier you are, the more happy this life will be for you without a doubt. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. All right. So you, you end your, your podcast, the Melissa made show saying wake up feeling prepared, go to bed feeling proud. And I still have not come up with anything to say yet, <laughs> but believe you, believe it's me, coming. I'm going to very catchy and it's going to get in your head and you're not going to be able to stop thinking about it. But until then, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. And as Lauren says, uh, please like, what is it like comment, su subscribe. I never say that. Please freaking leave a comment, like leave a review. It takes you two seconds, maybe not two seconds, but two minutes. So do us a favor, do your side of the bargain this is your way to say thank you to us. The more of you that, that leave reviews, the easier it is to be um, reaching higher amounts of people. So yes, Absolutely. please and thank you. <laughs> please and thank you. Have a great day, you guys. Bye. Wow, we've reached the end. But before I leave you, I'd love to hear from you. 
After all, it's not every day that someone reaches out and asks for your opinion. And to me, your opinion does matter. So please share this episode with anyone that you think needs to hear this message. And remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Melissa McAllister. And until next time, thank you for being your own health advocate.